This is chapter 13 of Wilson Rawls' book, Summer of the Monkeys. That night, not long after I had gone to bed, a storm blew in. Brother, was it ever a storm. As I had often heard my grandpa say, it was a ring-tailed wampus cat. I was sound asleep when the storm broke and I was awakened by an earth-jarring clap of thunder that all but turned me over in my bed. I was lying there, watching the flashes of lightning through my window and listening to the raging storm when the door of my room creaked open. It was Daisy. She's always been scared of storms. Jay Berry, she whispered, I'm scared. Can I come in for a while? Just, just until this crazy storm blows over? I was scared too, but I was never gonna let Daisy know it. I figured that I wasn't allowed to let Daisy know that I could ever be scared. Oh, Daisy, I said as I sat up gaining my confidence. I don't know what you're so scared of. It's just a little old storm. A little old storm, Daisy said. She came in and sat down on the edge of my bed. I think it's gonna blow the whole country away. I bet my playhouse is a mess. I bet it, and I had it looking so pretty. For several minutes, Daisy and I sat in silence, listening to the storm. Lightning was cracking and thunder was rolling. Every time it thundered, our log house trembled and the windows rattled. Strong gusts of wind slammed the rain against the windows so hard that I thought it would surely break the glass. I could hear the big red oaks around our home fighting back the storm. Limbs were squeaking and snapping and leaves were rattling. Right after a loud clap of thunder, it all but shook the entire house down. Daisy said, boy, old Thor must be mad tonight. Thor, I said surprised. What are you talking about? I've never heard that name before. Surely, Jay Berry, Daisy said, you've heard of Thor, the god of thunder. Everybody knows about him. Well, I don't know about him, I said. I've never heard of a thunder god named Thor before. Where do you hear things like that anyway? Daisy sighed and said, Jay Berry, I just don't know about you sometimes. I learn things by reading. If you would read something besides those old hunting and fishing stories, you might actually learn something too. Oh, Daisy, I said, I think reading hunt, I like to read hunting and fishing stories. I don't like to read about anything else. I wouldn't like to read anything about an old god of thunder. I think you'd be able, you'd like to read the story about Thor, the thunder god, Daisy said. It's a really good story. What's it about? Daisy scooted a little closer to me. She said, well, it goes something like this. Hmm. Well, thunder, God, Thor, the god of thunder, is a warrior. He lives way up in the heavens somewhere. And his, his long red hair and his long red beard, he has a chariot too. And it's pulled by four coal black horses that snort fire. Every time Thor gets mad, he jumps into that chariot and whacks those black horses and takes off through the heavens. The only weapon he has with him is a big old hammer. Along the way, he throws that hammer left and right. And every time the hammer hits something, it turns into a bolt of lightning. It makes no difference how many times Thor throws his hammer, he never loses it because it always comes back to him. The thunder you hear is the rumbling of those chariot wheels. That's why they call him Thor, the god of thunder. Boy, I said, that does sound like a pretty good story. I think I'd really like to read it. Do you still have the book? Oh, Daisy, I said, I, I don't like to read big books. Um, is it one of those little ones? Uh, it's in one of the little books grandma gave us, she said. You were supposed to read those books too, remember? You never even read one of them. I don't like big books, Daisy. Who ever heard of a boy reading things like The Little Red Hen and The Little Red Riding Hood and Three Little Pigs? They're just, they're just goofy books and that's all there is to it. I'm interested in more boy stuff. Jay Berry, I declare, I don't think there's any hope for you. I don't think you'll ever learn anything. Every girl and boy in the world should read these stories because they're important. And after all, they're really good. I don't care how good the stories are. I just can't get interested in reading them. Not now. The only thing I'm interested in is catching those monkeys. 
Just the mention of the word monkeys made my hair fly straight up. I jumped out of bed. I forgot all about the storm and everything else. Oh, I said in a loud voice. A frightened look came over Daisy's face. What's the matter, Jay Berry? She said. Are, are you going to have a fit? No, I'm not going to have a fit. I just thought of those monkeys. I bet they'll get drowned in the storm. It would be just my luck. Jay Berry, I don't think you have to worry about monkeys getting drowned. All animals know how to take care of themselves in a storm. If you know anything at all about animals, you should know that. I, I do know a lot about animals. I know about raccoons and possums and skunks and squirrels and things like that, but I don't know much about monkeys. <clears throat> if I ever catch one of those monkeys and they're hanging around, and I get rid of them all, I want to hope to never hear the word monkey ever again as long as I live. Daisy just giggled. I bet old Rowdy feels the exact same way you do, she said. Just then, old Thor must have really thrown that hammer. A big old lightning bolt zoomed, zoomed across the sky, hissing like a mad snake. From somewhere close by, there was a loud crack that sounded like a hundred rifles had gone off all at the same time. I knew that somewhere in the hills a big tree had split wide open. My room lit up so bright I could see the stitches in the patchwork of the quilt on my bed. From a sitting position I jumped about two feet straight in the air. Daisy shivered and then uttered a low moan and started rubbing her crippled leg with her hand. What's the matter Daisy? I asked. Does your old leg hurt? It sure does, Daisy said. Every time it storms like this, my leg hurts something terrible. Sometimes I just have to grit my teeth to keep from screaming. I felt sorry for my little sister. I wanted to help her, but I didn't know what to do, and I, I didn't know much about doctoring. I couldn't doctor a sick cat, much less a crippled leg. Do you want me to get the liniment bottle, I asked? Maybe if you rub some of that stuff on your leg, it would help. No, Daisy said, that wouldn't help at all. It used to, but not anymore. Lately, nothing seems to help. Why don't you go tell Mama your leg is hurting, I said. She can doctor just about anything. No, Daisy said, I don't want Mama to know. She has enough to worry about, and besides, she needs a rest. About that time, Thor must have gotten tired of riding around in his chariot because the storm let up. The wind and thunder and lightning stopped, but it was still raining, tadpoles and crawdads. As she got up from my bed, Daisy said, <coughs> looks like the storm will be letting up. I think I can go back to my room and lie down. Maybe my old leg will stop hurting. Just as she reached the door, she stopped and said, oh, I almost forgot. Just before I left my room, I saw the old man of the mountains again. You did, I said. Where, where was he when you saw him? Right in our house? No, Daisy said, he wasn't in our house. When the storm came, he got up close to the window because the rain was coming in. I looked through the glass and saw him standing out in the yard. Holy smokes, I said. What was that old man doing, prowling around on a night like this? I bet he was sopping wet. No, he wasn't wet, Daisy said. The old man of the mountains doesn't get wet if he doesn't want to. I started to give Daisy one heck of an argument about this. I didn't figure that anyone, not some old man of the mountains, could mess around with a rainstorm without getting wet. But I'd already decided that he was a spirit of some kind and I didn't know a thing in the world about spirits. Maybe they didn't get wet if they didn't want to. Remembering that Mama had told me to play along with Daisy when she was telling one, one of her stories, I said, well, what did that old man have to say this time? He didn't say a word, Daisy said. He was just standing there, pointing a stick at our house. When I heard Daisy say this, I all but came unglued. Does that mean we're going to have bad luck? I asked. Maybe that old man's going to burn our house down. No, Jay Berry, Daisy said. The old man of the mountains isn't going to burn down our house, and he would never do such a thing. He's too kind and gentle. But you said every time he pointed a stick at everything, bad luck was sure to come. No, Jay Berry, Daisy said, not every time. It just depends on what if the old man of the mountains is frowning when he points that stick at you. You'd better look out. 
that means he's unhappy with you and you're sure to have bad luck. But if he's smiling when he points that stick at you, it's different. It means you're gonna have good luck. Daisy, I interrupted. When you saw that old man, was he smiling or frowning? He was smiling, Daisy said. He was just standing out there in the storm with all of his long white hair and robe waving in the wind, pointing that stick at our house. And every time the lightning flashed, I could see him plain as day. He looked pleased and happy and had a warm smile across his face. We're going to have good luck, Jay Berry. You can be sure of that now. I sure hope he knows what he's doing, I said. I could use a stroke of good luck right now. I have a whole toe sack full of it. I'd like to catch those monkeys before someone else does. As unlucky as I've been, it's probably what will happen. I've worried so much about it now, I'll probably be white-headed before I'm 16 years old. Jay Berry, Daisy said, maybe if I told you a story, it would get your mind off all this worrying. I have a real good story in mind. Would you like to hear it? Daisy, I don't want to hear one of these old ghosty stories. Not on a night like this. It's been way too much storming going on, and we'll be lucky if we don't wake up dead in the morning anyway. Daisy giggled. Jay Berry, I've never heard anyone waking up dead over a story, but if you don't want to hear a good one, that's all right. I'll just save it for the next time. I didn't say anything to my little sister, but I thought, if I have anything to say about it, there won't be a next time in the storytelling business. After Daisy left the room, I had a terrible time going to sleep. I kept thinking that old man of the mountains and his good luck was supposed to be coming my way. When I finally did fall asleep, I had a strange dream. I dreamed that Rowdy and I were lost, way, way back in the mountains, and it was pitch dark and I couldn't see where we were going. I walked and walked. I kept falling over rocks and logs and bumping into trees, getting all tangled up in the underbrush. Finally, I got so tired and weak, I just couldn't go on any further. Rowdy laid, and I lay down under a big white oak tree and went to sleep. I started dreaming when I heard someone call my name. Jayberry, Jayberry, wake up, wake up right now. I opened my, my eyes and before me stood the old man of the mountains in his snow white robe. I looked down and saw his sandaled feet and I was just, he was just standing there, straight, with his arms folded, looking at Rowdy and me. His eyes were blue as robin eggs and he was smiling. I got up in my dream and I stood before him. Old man of the mountains, I said, my little sister said you would help any boy or any girl have good luck if they were good. Well, ever since she first told me about you, I've tried real hard to be a good boy. I really have. I haven't caught any of the little animals or birds, and I haven't even stepped on a flower or thrown a rock at a lizard. I've done everything that my mama and papa have asked me to do, and I've said my prayers every single night. I think I've been a pretty good boy, don't you? Now, can you please help me? I'm lost, and I'm tired, and I'm hungry, and I want to go home. Please, would you show us which way to go? The old man of the mountains didn't say a word. He just smiled and nodded his head and pointed with his stick. Rowdy and I started walking in that direction that he pointed. It wasn't long until I saw the lamplight in the windows of our home. I was awakened from a pleasant, wonderful dream by a loud banging noise. Daisy was pounding on the door of my room with that old crutch of hers. Jay Berry, she yelled, you better get up. Breakfast is ready and time's a-wasting. All right, I yelled. You don't have to beat the door down. I'm getting up. Daisy giggled and I heard a thumping of her crutch as she went on her way down the, ha the hallway. I hopped out of bed and flew into my clothes. Before leaving my room, I walked to my window and raised it. I half expected to see a dark, gloomy, miserable day, but I was pleasantly surprised. The storm had left, everything sopping wet, but there wasn't a rain cloud in the sky. A bright morning sun seemed to be taking a rest high atop of the highest peak of the Ozark Mountains, and it was just sitting there, big and bright, and looking like it was trying to make up its mind what to do next. Dry everything out or maybe make green things grow. Birds were singing and chickens were cackling. Out in our hog pen, Sloppy Ann was squealing with hunger. Up in the pasture, Sally Gooden mooed her delight with juicy green grass. 
and from down in our fields I heard the cawing of an old crow and the scream of a red-tailed hawk. It was one of those perfect Ozark mornings, clean, fresh, and green. I closed my eyes and puffed out my chest and sucked my lungs full of the fresh scented air. I could feel the tingling sensation all the way clear down to my toes. It made me feel like I had just been born all over again and I had new life ahead of me. As I stepped into the kitchen, I saw Mama, Papa, and Daisy had just seated themselves at the breakfast table. Boy, I said, ready to wash my face. Wasn't that a storm last night? It was a humdinger, all right, Daisy said. With all that rain, I bet Car Papa's corn is going to grow 20 feet tall. Oh, Daisy, I said. I dried my face with a towel. Corn doesn't even grow 20 feet tall. And if it did, you'd have to cut the stalks down with an axe to gather the ears. Papa laughed. If I ever grow corn 20 feet tall, I'll gather those ears all right. I wouldn't care if I had to climb down the stalks and ride them down to the ground. Daisy squealed with delight. Papa, you'd be just like Jack and the Beanstalk, she said. He grew, he grew a beanstalk all the way up to the heavens, and then he climbed it. Still chuckling, Papa said, that would be an easy way to get to heaven. Just grow a beanstalk and start climbing. I'll bet more people would get to heaven by climbing a beanstalk than they ever have been by following the golden rule. Looking hard at Papa, Mama said, I don't want to hear any more talk like that. It's not nice to joke about going to heaven and who's not. It's just not nice at all. Papa didn't say a word. He just grinned. Finished with breakfast, Papa got up from the table. He said, well, it's going to be too wet to do any work in the fields today. And in a way, I'm kind of glad of it. There are a few things around the place I've been wanting to do. Mama smiled at Daisy. Daisy laughed and said, I got my cut work cut out for me today, she said. Mama said, what young lady are you planning to do? Oh, I know that old storm messed up my playhouse, Mama, she said. I'll have to give it a good cleaning. Looking at Mama, I said, or Mama said, and what do you have on your mind, young man? I'm going down to the bottoms and see about my monkeys, I said. They could have drowned or blown away in the storm, and I'm worried about them. No, I don't want you to go down in those bottoms, Mama said, shaking her head. It'll be damp and cold down there. Everything's going to be dripping wet. You'd probably get soaked and come home with a bad cold or even pneumonia. Oh, Mama, I said, who ever heard of a boy getting sick just because he got wet? I've been wet a jillion times, and it's never made me sick not once. Before Mama could say anything, Daisy giggled and said, Jay Berry, I remember this one time you got wet and you were sick for a month. I'll never forget it. When did that happen, I asked. The time you were fixing the pulley on the well and fell in, Daisy said. Surely, Jay Berry, you haven't forgotten about that. Boy, there was more excitement around here that day when you were in the well than I have ever seen. Rowdy was looking down in the well and bawling for you so loud you could have heard him clear across to Arkansas. Our chickens and geese were making more racket than they do when a hawk shows up. Sloppy Ann was squealing, and Sally Gooden went absolutely crazy. She threw her tail in the air and jumped the pasture fence, and we didn't find her for a week. And with all that racket going on, Cindy, my poor little cat, she got so scared she climbed on top of the house, and I didn't think I was ever getting her down. Mama was screaming, and Papa got so scared, he almost fell in the well himself, trying to get a rope down to you. Boy, that was a day to remember. There was a lot of excitement around here that day, all right, Papa said. But I don't think we've ever had as much excitement as the day we did when Rowdy just sat down in a yellow jacket's nest. That was three days before anything was normal again. I wish things like that would happen all the time, Daisy said. It would make things more exciting, and I just love excitement. That wasn't a very nice thing to say, young lady, Mama said. What if your brother had drowned when he fell in the well? What would have happened then, you know? Oh, Mama, Daisy said, I don't think there's much chance of Jay Berry drowning. I looked down in the well, and he was swimming like a muskrat. It wasn't getting wet that made me sick, I mumbled. I was scared and my nerves got sick. Every 
everyone laughed except for me. I just couldn't see anything funny about falling in a well. It was a terrible day for me. Mama seemed to be in one of her better moods than she had been, and I figured it was time to mention the monkeys again. Mama, I said, I wouldn't be down in the bottoms very long, not, not over a couple of hours. I just want to see how they made it out during the storm. Mama looked at me and frowned. Jay Berry, she said, if you just have to go monkey hunting again, why can't you wait until later in the day? By then the sun will have dried things out. All right, I grumbled. I guess I can wait that long. Boy, I'll be glad when I get a little older. And just what are you going to do when you get a little older? Mama asked. I'm going to I'm going way back in the mountains and live in a hollow tree for the rest of my life, I said. That's what I'm going to do. What are you going to do for something to eat? And who's going to wash your clothes? Mama said. I'll live off the land, I said, and I won't need any clothes. Won't anybody be coming to see me either? Daisy squealed with laughter and said, Jay Berry, it gets mighty cold in those mountains in the wintertime. Maybe you'd better take at least one pair of britches with you. Mama and Daisy started laughing and my blood boiled. Papa saw that I was about to blow up and he came to my rescue. I could use some help uh, in the blacksmith shop, he said to me. I have to sharpen some plow points and you can work over the blower and forge for me. It was a relief to get out of the house away from Mama and Daisy. I loved to help Papa in our blacksmith shop. There was something about that work that fascinated me. The flying sparks, the anvil that was ringing, the cherry red metal and the roaring forge. Papa and I were about halfway to the blacksmith shop when Daisy poked her head out of the door and yelled, Jay Berry, I've been thinking, if you go live naked in a hollow tree way back in the mountains, you'd better be careful. A wood chopper might come along and chop down your tree that you're in. I turned to yell something back, but before I could open my mouth, she giggled and disappeared around the house. I heard Mama laughing with her. Women, I grumbled. I don't think I'll ever understand them. They think they're so funny. Aw, uh, I don't think you're mad at the women folk, Papa said. I think you're mad at yourself. Maybe those monkeys have something to do with it. You've been grumpy as a setting hen ever since the monkeys came into your life. I know, Papa. I really can't get mad at Mama and Daisy. I love them so much, but I want that pony and that 22 so bad I can hardly stand it. If something happened to those monkeys, it'll be the end of the world for me, and that's all there is to it. I'll never get another chance to make that much money again in my life, Papa, ever. Papa didn't say anything right away. He just walked along looking down at the ground and then in a low voice he said, Son, if you really want that pony and that gun, and I mean really want them, I'm pretty sure someday you'll have them. I could hardly believe what I was hearing. Do you really believe that, Papa? I said. Do you really think that someday I'll have a pony and a gun? I sure do, Papa said, nodding his head. I believe a boy can have anything in life that he wants once he starts working for it. The main thing is not to give up. It makes no difference how tough things get. Just bow your back and keep on working and put your heart and soul into everything you do. As long as your way, as, as you go along your way, Live a clean, good life, and don't hurt anyone or anything, and always be honest. It doesn't hurt to pray a little, too. And if you do all those things, someday you'll work hard enough to get your pony and your gun. You'll get help with the things you need when you least expect it. Help? I said. Who's going to help me? Papa looked at me and smiled. I think I'll let you figure that out for yourself, he said. I was still trying to figure out what Papa meant when he opened the door to our blacksmith shop. Rowdy had followed us from the house. When I saw what we were doing, he stuck his tail between his legs and just went back. He didn't like the flying sparks and the ringing of the anvil. He just didn't like loud things like that. This has been chapter 13 of Wilson Rawls' Summer of the Monkeys.